Howdy y'all, my name is Price and welcome back to some more Statu Feli! What's up, pet little kitty? What do we got going on here? Weather report, it is raining today. Did I set my... My watering can to be upgraded? That is a question that I have. Probably not, I don't know if we're at that point yet. Um, the egg festival is tomorrow. What else we got going here? Uh, I might need some more space someday. You can upgrade, yep, yep. Okay. So, let me check our relationship stuff so we can give Sophia another gift. We're not any farther along in that relationship. Um, where is... Y'all, it's been a bit. Where is my chest? Okay, we do have this one. So, I have been upgrading those. I've got nine copper bars, so it's possible that I did that with my watering can. And because I don't see it anywhere, I'm thinking that's what's up. Okay, so today we will probably do some... Fishing, I think, or mining. Which would I rather do? Um, we could go mining and get some more of that stuff. Fishing would give me more money, obviously, and then with that I could buy the better rod. Um, so yeah, um, real quick, I'm going to go give these cookies to um, Sophia, and then we're going to also look for Robin's axe, which should be around the same area where Sophia is. And then I can kind of fully make the decision on... If I want to fish or if I want to mine. Because you kind of got to pick one or the other. How, how big of an inventory do I have? Do I only have one? I only have one, so I think fishing might be a better call. Um, so, here we go. Let's pick up that guy. Um, how am I doing on the... It's been a while since I played this file, y'all. I've been playing a lot of other ones, too. Um, spring foraging I need to do... Okay, we need to do a lot. Um... And we only have access to this guy, right? Okay. I want to make sure to hold on to, like, a parsnip and all that kind of stuff. Now, these are spring onions. These are not the things that will get us that. But I think these will help us with energy. Oh, by the way, I meant to mention, I have a new mod on that's definitely going to change a lot of stuff. Some of y'all may not love it. Um, why am I not? Okay, there we go. Pressing the wrong buttons. Um, some of y'all may have a problem with it, some of you won't. I'm thinking most of y'all will be fine with it. I turned on a stamina regeneration mod, so we will passively regenerate stamina when we're not using it. Um, I will say, it's highly effective. Oh, is she not here? Uh, or is she in her room? Um, she's here. Okay, she must be in her room. Oh, here she comes. Hello. You're so sweet, thank you. You're welcome. I wonder what Gus is making for the Egg Festival. Well, we'll find out. Okay, so I have this Stamina Regeneration mod. You'll notice it as I'm playing, that essentially, if you're not using your Stamina, it will regenerate. You'll really notice it when I'm fishing, or when I'm uh, mining, that my, my energy basically won't run out nearly as often, which, to me, I think is a great idea. I, um, I really like it. It keeps me from having to, like, just waste uh, whole afternoons, because I used all my energy, like... Um, uh, what do you call it? Watering my plants. I know that energy is like a major limiting factor in um, Stardew. And that's kind of like what keeps you sort of in check. So I understand why some people might be like, oh, Price, that's like way too OP. Um, but personally, I think that it, um, it's just going to make for a more fun experience in that I just get to get to go. And ultimately, I don't think Stardew is the kind of thing that needs to... Um, be difficult or be challenging or force you to really have to pick between one or the other. I think that you should be able to just keep on playing. I've always found the energy aspects a little, well, quite limiting, to be honest. So, anyway, um, that's where I'm at. Hope y'all are doing well out there. It has been a couple weeks since I played this. Y'all probably noticed on the channel I've been a little light lately. As I've said numerous times, things get busy um, and I have to focus on uh, the main channel stuff. We started back up D&D, &D, Hero Squad, um, which is a ton of fun. Um, and any of y'all who watch it know that I'm the DM, and that requires a lot of attention on my part to kind of plan out um, the whole campaign, you know? So um, with that in mind, you know, I, I frequently, basically every two weeks now, I'm going to have to be planning um, campaign-related stuff. The, the, that first week was the toughest, as it always is, because you kind of have to get 
back into the groove of things. You have to plan a ton going forward. And then you end up kind of being over-prepared. And so I'm in the semi-over-prepared part right now, where I essentially um, have a lot of it planned out and could probably wing it through an episode. But uh, I don't want to wing it. I want it to be perfect. So that's what it comes down to. Now, um, oh, gosh, I keep hitting the wrong buttons. It, like I said, it's been a bit since I played this. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what's been going on. That's basically why I've been so slowed down. Beyond that, I've told you all, you know, Christy and I are going to Amsterdam in um, uh, May, early May. And so because of that, also, we're doing a lot of planning around that. Um, we're trying to do a lot of, like, family stuff and whatnot before then. There's just a lot of plates spinning uh, as it were. So, uh, a little exhausted lately, not gonna lie. I've been, um, quite sleepy, haven't gotten as much sleep as I would like to, but, uh, you know, that is what it is. Um, it, uh, so that's, that's kind of cut into my ability to get stuff recorded, um, when I, when I kind of got to motivate myself to. With Stardew, I love playing it, but I have to go, you know, I want to read the comments. I want to know what questions y'all want related to psychology that I can talk about. And, um, because that, it takes a little more effort than other stuff that I do. Um, same with Epic Chef. Epic Chef I haven't done um, in a couple of weeks. But uh, I will be picking that back up here soon in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but um, same deal, basically, where I'm uh, kind of... Uh, it takes a lot of preparation from me. And Epic Chef, to me, honestly, is just like a little more of a stressful game. Because those challenges, let me tell you. How do I save? Or how do I sell? See, look, look at this. This is how... Oh, you know what it is? I'm using a gosh darn controller when I don't play this game with a controller. I'm just, that's the thing. I'm like, what's going on? Why am I so confused? I don't play this game with a controller, and here I was sitting there using a controller. I was like, why don't I know these controls? Because you don't play it that way, Price. Um, that's how tired I am. That's how you know I'm tired. Oh, that feels so much better. I was like, why am I so confused? Um, so... Uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. What have I been playing lately? I've been, um, playing, you know, I still got Horizon that I'm working on, still playing WWE a bunch, but actually I've, uh, kind of taken a little break from both of those and have been replaying, uh, the South Park game, specifically South Park, the Fractured But Whole, um, because, you know, I'm a fan of South Park from long, long time ago. Um, I know that it's a, it's the kind of show that's very controversial. I know a lot of y'all out there might not like it. You might be like, Price, how could you like it? Uh, you know, I grew up on it. I can kind of recognize the, sat the satire in it and the stuff that's problematic. You know, I'm able to kind of, uh, at least for me, I'm able to kind of push past because I think that the creators, they've grown over time and they're aware of kind of the problematic stuff that they put out there and they actually multiple times throughout the series have made episodes basically calling themselves out for the things that they've said in the past and so i think because of that showing of like remorse and you know that like they get it um why people would be upset with them i think for me that makes it feel a little more like it's okay to watch i feel less uh like it's a reprehensible thing um so, I've been playing back through that second game. I love that second game. I have played it five or six times through, um, and every time there's, like, new stuff that I missed the first time around or the last couple times around. And um, there's a certain challenge that I'm doing this time around because Chrissy really likes getting achievements, so I'm working on getting some of the achievements done for Chrissy as well because I'm playing it on the Xbox, um, which we use uh, Chrissy's account, <clears throat> account for. Um, because she likes getting achievements. So whenever I play games, I just give her all my, my achievement points. Um, so yeah, that's been a lot of fun playing through that again. I'm almost done. I'm like about to go do basically the last boss thing, but I'm going to clear the DLCs first. That's kind of where I'm at. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing in the free time that I've got beyond that, you know, recording stuff over at Stumped and, um, same old, same old busyness. Always trying to kind of work on new creative projects. Um, I actually would love to hear what y'all think. I've been thinking about maybe um, uh, going so far as to start a different channel. Um, it would still be under the Stumped banner, 
but basically one where I can do more creative projects, do stuff related to art, do stuff related to writing, you know, just like kind of vlog about things that I'm working on projects, because I know that a lot of um, YouTube is about optimizing for the algorithm. And I know that that would mess up the um, analytics uh, the algorithm for this channel, because, you know, a lot of y'all wouldn't be as interested in my creative stuff um, as you are the gameplay and vice versa. The people who are into the inner, uh, the um, creative stuff might not be that into um, gameplay stuff. And so that would cause my overall viewership to go down in a way, like on certain videos, that kind of like um, that spread is something that YouTube doesn't like to see. They don't want to see low view videos and high view videos at the same time. They don't want watch times to be significantly different. They don't want video lengths to be significantly different. So this channel, I post a lot of long form content, but if I were to do creative type stuff, I mean, it's hard to push a creative video past 10 minutes before you know, you're know you really spending a lot, a lot, a lot of time. So I'd be curious what y'all think about that. Obviously, you know, it's a big decision for me to come, uh, come to. Uh, I've got a lot of of stuff to figure out um, in the build up to that if I were to it wouldn't be for a long time down the road but it's just some idea I'm kind of bouncing around in my head because um, ultimately I, I've always been someone focused on creativity telling stories and narratives and coming up with characters and all that kind of stuff I've talked about it before but my friend Chad and I ever since childhood ever since we were very young we were always coming up with ideas for like cool movies and like you know one of the first things that um, Chad and I worked on together as kids. It was like, I don't know, fifth or sixth grade. We made a, um, a parody of, uh, James Bond, um, that we called, oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, instead of Goldfinger, it was Butterfinger. And, uh, it was this puppet raccoon that we had as the main bad guy, as Butterfinger, as we called him. And it was just this whole silly thing because we were into James Bond at the time, all the old ones, and so we put a bunch of references to it anyway. Anyway, I'm hoping that one day we can find an old VHS copy of that and then digitize it and put it online so that y'all can see it. Oh, I just missed it. Um, <clears throat> because it's ridiculous, but it's also it was a ton of fun back in the day. So, yeah, I'm hoping that one day I can get that to y'all to see. Um, but even if not, you know, that's the kind of a uh, childhood that I have, just us constantly coming up with creative stories and ideas and just carrying them out. And, um, you know, that's just the kind of life I live, I guess. It's the, the style of uh, individual that I am. And it um, is something that I really, really value and I love. And I get a lot of um, kind of um, enjoyment and feelings of competence and all kinds of things. It really gives me energy. So, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. I kind of would like to do some more creative projects. I think it would help me feel more um, like I can do stuff um, on this channel as well, that I would feel more, um, how do you say? It's like I will want to do more stuff on this channel because it'll give me the kind of energy to like have a balance, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, we'll keep that stuff. Um, I guess I can put away the lost axe for now. I just don't want to forget it. Now, which foraging bits am I missing? I'm missing a leek. I've got a horseradish in here, right? Do I have a leek? No. So we're going to go look for a leek. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll probably just chop down some trees and stuff. That's when you'll probably notice more so the, um, the energy level stuff because... Basically, you're able to like chop down trees, bust rocks, and everything like that, and then just wait a little bit, and it comes back. And that gives you so much freedom to keep doing stuff. It'll allow me to clear through all the stuff on my farm a lot quicker, which I know, like I said, for some people, you might be frustrated with that um, lack of challenge. I personally think that it's just, you know, make the game the, the way you want to make it. I'm already playing with mods. Why not uh, help out there a bit? I just realized I could have brought the thing up here, couldn't I? Um, it's fine. We'll do it the next time when we come out to mine, which may be tomorrow. We'll see. Um, so yeah, 
creative projects. There's, you know, I'm always working on, like, I'm, I've been writing some horror stories. I've been working on what some of y'all may have known from a while back called, you know, what I call Project Neon, which is the sort of almost like a role playing campaign system um, and um, like uh, also story, universe, everything like that. Um, I'm very into it. I love doing it. Um, but, uh, you know, it would give me a place to sort of release that, bounce ideas off of y'all, see, you know, kind of, um, what works and what tracks, and just give me kind of a motivation to do it. I think that sharing it is part of what makes it so enjoyable to me and interesting is, like, being able to share that stuff, um, with y'all. Okay, we got the artisan bundle, we got the spring crops bundle, we got the animal bundle, fall crops, summer crops... And quality crops. Okay, so I should really try and get five gold star parsnips and an extra parsnip that I can use um, for this guy. And that's about that. Um, what about the fish bundle? This will be the one that I'll kind of want to pay a lot of attention to. But also, you know, I might not be able to fully get this. You get the glittering boulder removed. Um, don't have an issue with that right now, I don't think. It'll be nice eventually, but, you know, that's just to get the, the rare fish. So I'll, I'll look through this again later. What's nice is if you do the F1 stuff, um, for example, you do this, uh, and you can look at this, and it'll tell you um, community center, fish tank, river fish. So I can always like look at a fish before I sell it and be like, ooh, do I need that? And if I have gotten that finished, that set, it'll um, show like a check mark or a green um, hue to it. So, um, so yeah. Now, oh, I could try and get down these spring uh, seeds um, before the end of the day. Um, so we'll see if I can't do that. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the update about, you know, what's going on in my world um, and kind of, yeah, where, where we're at over here at, uh, at our place. I got some psychology related stuff over here that um, we, uh, we may get around to talking about today or possibly next time, depending on how things go. Um, Y'all, a lot of y'all uh, sounded interested in the discussions of um, temperament and personality and kind of how that stuff works together. Um, specifically, y'all were interested about the whole that it uh, that personality is related to genetics, which um, I will I would love to talk about. Um, so how about we go ahead and do a little bit of that right now? Um, so when we talk about temperament. Um, Specifically, what I was talking about was infant temperament. I want to clarify that because there is also the study of temperament in adults, which is kind of different uh, on what it focuses on. Um, but uh, that's not what I'm discussing. I'm discussing temperament in infants. Um, and what that refers to is kind of like, and this is a very genetic um, thing. This is uh, innate to the child. Um, it's kind of like the general reaction to stimulus in the environment, specifically novelty, new things in the environment, new people in the environment. And so there's three basic types of temperament. Um, and they're basically called um, easy um, or relaxed, uh, slow to warm, and um, active or... Um, you know, when I was doing teaching, uh, it was called, but luckily, like, you know, my teachers were always like, we don't like to call it this. Uh, and so we taught it um, as like the active idea. But a lot of um, studies refer to it as difficult um, children, which, you know, you hear that and you probably know what I mean by that. But obviously, that's not a very positive way to speak of those kids. Um, so essentially what it is, is like, you know, the easygoing kids, they... Um, are the ones who they see new stuff and they're curious, they're excited and interested. They don't get very um, agitated by new things. Um, whereas the slow to warm kids, it takes some time. A new thing in the environment is initially scary, but then with a little bit of um, uh, with a little bit of time, they can warm up to new people, new um, environmental stimulus, that kind of stuff. Um, so it just takes a little bit of time. They're a little more cautious early on. And then the quote-unquote difficult children um, or active children um, frequently are not happy with... Let's see. Watch my energy go up. See? 148. 150. See, just barely, but it does go up. Um, 
So they are ones who um, they don't like change. They'll react pretty uh, like um, aggressively to it, um, and mostly are averse to it. And uh, you know, are fussy, fussy kids often. And um, you know, there's some interesting stuff about this and like how it was studied early on. Let's go to sleep for the night. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get my watering can back, am I? Because it's the egg festival. Crap. That was bad timing on my part. Oh, that's going to suck. I got, No, I might... Mm, can I get over there and get it? Can I get over there and get it? I don't think I can. I don't think I can. This is going to suck. Oh, game. How dare you do this to me? Um, well, we will lose some of our crops. That's how it goes. Um, we won't lose all of them. We will lose some of them. Uh, but, you know, you got to accept those kinds of things. It happens. Um, so, temperament. Um, one thing that's very interesting about this, because it actually speaks to how these kids are going to act as they get a little bit older. When a child is an infant, you can test their, um, temperament. And, uh, it's basically like, um... You know, you show them something that is novel. So when we say infant, you know, we mean anywhere between uh, a couple of weeks old to a couple of months old. Basically, as soon as they can, as they got their eyes open and they can kind of kick and move and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the these studies on these kids with the, on their temperament um, were focused on um, essentially like uh, they would bring in these very young infants, like I said. And they would, like, basically, like, show them, like, oh, like a mobile, you know, something that, like, floats over their head and spins and everything like that with a whole bunch of different, like, colors and shapes and all kinds of things. Things that would be kind of very um, reactive, you know, something that would elicit a response. And uh, so with that, um, they would, you know, basically just, like, hover this thing above the kid and... Uh, do it for a little while. Very active, very obviously trying to get a response from the kid. And these um, babies that had, uh, that are, you know, more of the easygoing, uh, uh, easy kids, they um, would uh, essentially have very little muscle tension. They would not respond in a way that looked like they were agitated or worried or anything like that. Um, they seem just very calm um, in their face of it. And even like interested and curious, they would kind of laugh and giggle and maybe try and reach for the thing. You know, very much interested and not concerned. Slow to warm kids, they'd have a little bit of muscle tension, right? A little bit of kind of a stress response maybe. And maybe even they start to get a little fussy. But, you know, eventually they kind of warm up to it, or at least it takes them a slow time until they have, like, a meltdown. And then the kids who are um, uh, active, they uh, tend to have um, high muscle tension, very significant response very quickly to, um, to that experience. Uh, it's going to be 9 a.m. here in a second. Yeah, there's not anything I can really do about where I'm at, so eh. Um, gosh, I wish I could have gotten my watering can. That's going to suck because it's going to be nighttime afterwards, and either way, I'm not going to be able to get it from Clint, right? Um, unless I'm wrong and my watering can is, like, in my other box, in which case, I'll, I mean, I'll look when I get home because it didn't say anything about, like, oh, your watering can is ready. So, you know, let's get a couple of strawberry seeds. Not a lot. Um... Might try and plant those and see if we can't get something out of them. I'm going to run around and talk to everybody just to get the people who we maybe haven't talked to yet. Um, so, so yeah, that's the, the three different types of temperament and how they show in infancy. The very interesting thing about this, okay, and this is something that I think is very important for potential parents to know, and specifically so you don't brag about your infant, okay? Um, you may not think this, but this is actually the, the way that it works, is um, those infants that are uh, easy, right? The ones that have the low muscle tension, they get interested and excited about new things. Those are the kids that often go on to be incredibly uh, energetic and hard to manage when they are... Oh, I get to talk to you. Um, 
when they are toddlers. All right, they're the ones that are going to run and jump off of everything. They're the ones that are going to, you're going to have to be chasing around all the time because they don't have concerns around novelty, new things, things that could be potentially dangerous. Um, so, uh, you know, you might be like, yay, I've got this easy baby. Oh, this is so great. They're going to be the most perfect child forever. Um, often not the case. If you have an easy baby, you're going to have a tough toddler and often vice versa. Um, where, you know, a slow to warm child, I was a slow to warm, uh, kid. Um, they're going to be a little more reserved. They're going to be a little more standoffish. They're not going to necessarily want to engage in stuff right away. They might have to be a little encouraged to try new things. The slow to warm kids. Um, and then the, uh, the kids that are, hey, we did it. Um, on that active spectrum, they're going to be a lot more averse to change and they may even, you know, get very upset if they're pushed to do things that they're not ready for. Um, and so in those instances, it's best to recognize the strengths and weaknesses of your child and not try and push them past what they are, um, uh, what they're comfortable with, what they're ready for. We're going to go ahead and start the egg festival, but I'm going to still talk to y'all while we're doing this. Um, so they uh, will, if you push them, right, then it's sort of like what we talked about with parenting styles and attachment. Um, you're going to push them past their threshold and they're going to, um, it's going to have the negative effect. It's going to have the reverse effect. They essentially learn that, oh, I can't trust you to protect me in instances where I am stressed out. Um, okay, give me a second here. We'll, we'll do the voices. It's time for the highlight of today's festivities, the annual spring egg hunt. Calm down now, kiddos. You're going to need all your energy if you hope to find the most eggs and take home the exclusive prize. Now, is everyone ready? Oh, you know it. We're ready to go. Let the egg hunt begin! All right, we're running around. We're looking for eggs. So, like I said, um, if, you know, your um, child is, say, like the, the example that we would use in teaching was, like, if you uh, take your kid to a birthday party and there's a clown and they're scared of the clown, right? This is something that a lot of people can relate to, right? Even adults often are afraid of clowns. And um, in this instance, if your child is afraid of the clown and is, you know, obviously showing distress, is wanting to avoid or get away from this clown, um, then to push them to uh, go to the clown, to laugh at the clown, to sit on the clown's lap, to do whatever, um, is going to have the opposite effect, likely, in that instead of... Uh, having your child be more um, comfortable with clowns going forward. Um, this will actually reinforce their fear because you're pushing them into a situation that they're obviously not comfortable with and making them confront the thing that they're afraid of with no appropriate coping mechanisms to deal with it. Once again, let's do some voices. Wow, look at all these eggs. Now, if only I could get you kids to pick up litter this efficiently, we'd have the cleanest town this side of the Gem Sea. <laughs> And now, the winner of this year's egg hunt. It might not be me. I don't think I got that many. Sophia! Yeah, see? Sophia got it. I didn't get that many eggs. Usually I do. Well done, Sophia. Here's your prize. Enjoy! All right. That's okay. I've won it a million times. If y'all go watch it on the main stump channel, we actually, uh, we were very mean, Jazzy and I, when we did it there. Well, that's it for this year's egg festival. Thanks for coming, everyone. All right, I'm going to double check my other chest. Oh, I'm hoping I have the uh, watering can, but I don't think I do. No watering can. Because I'm almost positive that I took it. Yeah. Well, like I said, we're going to lose some of these crops. Hopefully not too many. Um, it happens. Uh, we'll save these seeds for tomorrow. We got a couple hours, so maybe I'll bust down some trees and things. This might be a slightly shorter episode because we're already at 30 minutes and I don't want to go for like 50 minutes, I don't think, because um, I want to record another episode. But, um, so yeah, uh, or maybe I will because I want to keep talking about this stuff. We'll see. You'll see. You'll know if you're looking at the timestamp. Um, 
So you don't want to push kids past their comfortability um, too much. Like it's it's okay to expose kids to things that they're not comfortable with, but you also need to take their lead, right? If they're getting uh, clearly distressed to an extreme degree, you need to get them out of that context. You need to show them that they can rely on you for um, dealing with their um, extreme emotions and that they can use you as a coping mechanism because until they're much older and can kind of internalize their coping mechanisms, basically have like a little version of you inside of their head that they can think about in those contexts. Um, and then as they get older, they can have a little version of themselves inside their heads that they can use as a coping mechanism in that context. Um, it's a process of learning. And if you push them too far into it, it makes it more difficult for them to trust you, right? And so that goes back to the attachment conversation that we had before um, in a previous episode, which if you're interested in that, go check out, I think, the last episode, and uh, that'll be that. Um, you know what? I think because we just got past that point, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about temperament-wise before we get into personality, which we can do next episode. Um, so temperament in infancy, it changes as um, kids get into their toddler years. So you, do, you need to recognize that. Or no, the temperament doesn't change, but the exhibit um, changes, right? The kid who is the active type or the slow to warm type as an infant will appear very fussy and they'll you know cry more and everything like that. They might be seen as difficult infants, whereas there's the easy ones who they seem to be uh, relaxed and you know they seem to be a an easy baby as they hit toddlerhood switch roles they switch sides right the easy kids are the ones you got to pay attention to because they're going to hurt themselves if you're not paying attention because they're going to run around jump off things do everything um, and those other ones you need to pay attention to in terms of the things that upset them and kind of help them cope you teach kids coping mechanisms first through external it's you as the coping mechanism they can trust you and then as they get older it's about they can trust themselves and the world to keep working in a similar way so that they can escape things because they know that they've got you to eventually rely on if they need to and then as they get older than that they learn that they can rely on themselves and the ways that they can think about and cope with things and that's because they've built up a structure that's very rigid and strong around their coping mechanisms but if you undermine that at any stage then it you know causes them to um, have to work harder to get to those next stages right there you can't really jump past stages of development as much as you need to work through them regardless of how old you are right so it's like if you skip stages and then you make it all the way to adulthood as an adult you're going to have problems associated with those skip stages that you're going to still need to work through in some way and it takes on a different way that you work through it but you still have to work through those issues so um yeah, that's uh, we'll call that there. That's infant temperament. Uh, super interesting stuff. And it'll lead into our next discussion in the next episode about personality because some of those physical traits asso associated with temperament are highly correlated with your uh, reflection of your personality. Temperament is genetic. And in many ways, a lot of aspects of personality are also genetic with a lot of environmental influence as well from your parents. But um, there's a lot of genetics driving personality. And uh, yeah, we'll get into that next time so y'all uh with that thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this episode of stardy valley i hope you enjoyed the psychology talks obviously if you do please leave a like a comment all that stuff down below because it does really help with the channel you know comment anything down below right i've seen some of y'all you watch my videos and you just comment something like nice or awesome or cool or thanks or whatever that helps do that it's engagement it shows people it shows youtube that people are watching my videos and helps other new people to see See my videos as well um so that would be great i would love it if y'all would do that but most importantly have a wonderful rest of your day i have been price and i will see y'all next time